Hi Kiru, how are you doing, man? Hey, I'm good, Pratik. Thanks for having me in this session. How are you doing? I'm good. I haven't seen you in a long time, so I'm happy to have you here. But before we start, I have a question for you. Sebi released this piece of data saying 89% of FNO traders don't make money. When are you quitting the stock markets? No, even though I've been in the markets for a long time, so whatever yeah. Sebi released, you know, the thing is, well, even though they said 89% of the people are not making money, one thing that you no know, people are forgetting is, you know, from 1995 to 2020, almost you no know, during this 25 years, only four crore demand accounts were opened, hmm. and in the next two years, additional 4.5 crores of demand accounts has been opened. So what we have seen in the last 25 years. We, have, we were able to you know, replicate the same growth in just next two years because of this you know, pandemic. So mainly because of this pandemic, people were looking for alternate options to make money or you know, people were not occupied much. Even though they were saying working from home, they were not really working from home. They were trying you know, this trading stuff. So most of these people, more than 50-60% you know, of these people came in the last two years and they wanted to dabble in the market but the thing is 90 percent of them are you no know, purely random traders they you know trade completely based on news what they see in you know, channels or what they see in newspapers so most of these trades that they have been taken in the you know, last few years is completely random by most people so only a few as their own process so i'll summarize what you just said you said massive adoption in people opening dmat accounts one second thing i'll take out from the report, we've gone from 7.1 lakh FNO traders to 45 lakh from 2019 to 2022. So massive, what is that, 5x, right? 75s are more than that, 500% type increase. And you're saying these new guys had no clue about what trading is and they were simply gambling? Is that what you're saying? Yes, not only gambling. So the thing is, they don't you know everybody is gambling, man. So be it you know, a trade new guy or a you know, experienced guy. But the thing is, people who are been in the markets, they know all this risk reward ratio. How much I'm going to make? Like if I'm making 100 rupees, how much I'm going to risk? If I'm going to risk 10 rupees to make 100 rupees, fine. But if I'm going to risk 200 rupees to make that 100 rupees, it doesn't look good. Hmm. So all these things you know, will come into traders mind only after they cross the 10 years, after they put in their own money and after they lose, after they blow up their account, eventually they will understand. So all this you no know, risk, like only when the people put in money and eventually get surprised because of all these unknown events that is happening, sudden movements and suddenly losing 10%, 20% of their account in one day. So only when they are you no know, filled with these surprises, they learn. Just because you no, know, you we you know, teach them through YouTube or teach them through some no other medium, they, people don't learn easily. People learn only when they get surprised. So is trading systematic risk to reward is something that only professionals understand, and because people did not understand it, they burnt their hands. Are you right? Does that make sense? Right, right. And also one more important point is people who are into options buying. So you no, know, these people you no, know, you no know, recently jumped in. Ninety percent of them might be into this you no know, options buying versus options selling. And people who were trying to do get into options buying, they'll see okay, I checked last expiry and I could see this uh, you no know, ten rupees option premium going to five hundred rupees. Yeah. So they tend to you no know, expect the same because of the recency bias. They tend to expect the same. Okay, last week this four rupees option went to four hundred. Probably this week I'll also buy this four hundred. I mean four rupees option. I'll, they'll put all their money into that one particular trade, expecting it to make it big in just one trade or trying to you know, revenge trade and recover all their losses in one trade. But the main thing that they forget is, option buying, it's, it works like Pareto principle. 80% of your profits will come from less than 20% of your trades. Correct. So, you need to you know, keep trade, taking losses frequently, but once in a while, that gives you, you know, very huge returns. But people are not patient enough to you know take all those repeated losses over a period of time. So this Pareto principle works with you no know, all these breakout kind of systems or trend following systems. We never know when that you no know, 20% of the trades will come. So only that 20% of the trades is going to determine you know, overall your you no know, 80% of the profits. So these things people know doesn't realize it in during their initial phase. Okay, Kiru, let's be honest, okay. Capital, chalo, we can learn how to make the risks small. Chalo. It, it's a learned thing, okay. Um, adjust position based on risk. Chalo, you know, someone can explain us based on wakes, we can move. Chalo, we can learn it's a skill. So now my question is, um, 
can you tell us how you develop an algo strategy maybe go from a discretionary logic and then tell me what does a uh, a final quantitative logic look like what are the steps involved one two three what you have to do is i'll tell you a simple example so find out how much bank nifty has moved over the past five years from 2017 to till date i guess you now from 2016 june onwards weekly options was introduced so take a data from 2017 to till date just bank nifty open high low close value which you can download from nsc now what you do is find out what is the range every day's range how bank nifty you know overall range from 2017 to till date so if you observe prior to 2017 if you observe most of these ranges is almost same like you know from monday to friday the ranges will be normal once in a while you could see a big range movements but post 2017 if you could see except thursday rest of the days ranges were much higher thursday's range just became narrower and narrower and narrower over the period of time because of the introduction of weekly options where the expiry is happening on thursday so this data suggests to you that you can't expect a bigger range moves on expiry days that can happen once in a while but that is not going to be frequent so probably 80% of the days on thursday is going to be very range bound mm. so what it signifies is since you can apply any kind of non directional systems on thursday and if you have a proper risk control then the probability of making you no know, high consistent profit over a period on specifically on expiry days is higher because that is what the overall data says now you can go and create strangles or straddles with a wide stop loss or you no know, you know adjusting the overall position so that it becomes a complete non directional setup on thursday so this is the right way to start or you no know, create a trading system so instead of having a predetermined notion stating okay i want to create straddles i want to create strangle think of overall market behavior and then try to put in your you no know, strategy into it then that works but this without back testing one should not even try to do right now we're still in the hypothesis stage what you explained ki we have an observation and it seems to be working but it has to be you can back test on many things it could be excel or whatever uh, it could be ami broker whatever but you have to back test it before you actually even think about doing something like this right okay so the thing is you can directly start with straddles or strangles back test but if you have this approach then there is a core logic behind with no why your strategy is working now if you go on back this then if it gives you satisfactory results then there is a higher probability that you will stick to it because you clearly know why the strategy is working because the last few years after the introduction of weekly option the market behavior changed so you would be able to stick to it you will have the conviction otherwise you will think no everything has been changed you said market behavior changed okay but sometimes structurally the market can change also so for example sebi can introduce a new rule so maybe say timings can change when timings change i'm sure behavior will also change because ultimately you're trading people at the end of the day you're trading people's views and opinions of the future right when you're trading uh, even when you're investing you're investing in the views and opinions and what you think the market but specifically to trading it's opinions right now uh when sebi introduces something and a fundamental behavior change happens one example is fin nifty right so fin nifty had very low liquidity then dheere dheere liquidity increased uh, but something changed between the relationship between fin nifty and bank nifty tell me what happened see what happened is with respect to fin nifty obviously people initially if you observe fin nifty expiry was also on thursday so fin nifty mm. bank nifty and uh, nifty and uh, you no know, cleverly you know they understood okay nobody is trading fin nifty so they shifted the expiry to tuesdays right and slowly more and more people who specifically trade on expiry days if you observe there are you no know, many people who trade only on expiry days even i only trade on expiry days so so my capital is you no know, allocated only on tuesdays so i have you no know, capital which is completely unused now i could go and put that into fin nifty on tuesdays so this fundamental shift where you no know, most of the you no know, fund which is sitting idle on rest of the days now i could go ahead and use it on expiry days on tuesday this is only because of this if you observe the liquidity you know slowly started increasing and also if you go and check the overall contracts traded for nifty bank nifty and fin nifty on tuesdays it is much much higher it is almost you no know, 5x 10x higher than the rest of the index nifty and you no know, bank nifty together because more people wanted to trade on fin nifty on expiry days Uh, so you said something interesting. You said that because it moved to Tuesday, it gave you one more opportunity. And as a trader, you tried to backtest or created a system around that Tuesday expiry. And this sounds very nice and lovely and rosy. 
Uh, but this reminds me of 2000, I don't even remember the year, but I think it was like 2009 or so, and I was trading HDIL. It is so stupid, Kiru Bakran, you will, you will laugh, okay? I started to trade futures. You remember HDIL, right? HDIL futures was hot, right? Um, and I went short, long, short, long during a day. And I would not look at M to M. So I was using Power India Bulls. Do you remember Power India Bulls? Uh, India Bulls, I know. India Bulls is renamed as Power India Bulls. No, no. So they had a software called PIB, Power India Bulls. Their software was called Power India Bulls. <laughs> so over there, you had to go to a, a place to see your net uh, M2M of the day. You could not see it just over there, right? So uh, I said, okay, I will not look at it because I'll become full of emotions. I will write down my answer. Now, somewhere, the lot size, I don't remember. Let's say it was 100. I had written minus 100. Actually, it was plus 100. So I was trading completely opposite the entire day, not knowing what my net position was. And I lost 25, 30,000 rupees in a single day, which was all the money in the world for me. Right? It was a lot of money, right? Like I was like, now what will I do with my life? <laughs> and uh, I, I was really depressed that day. And this was 25, 30,000 rupees. Okay, here I have a screenshot of you losing 2.81 lakh rupees and 26 rupees and 25 paisa in a single day. Walk me through how you felt and how did you deal with this psychologically? Yeah, that was actually not even single day. That was in 10 minutes actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to move to get a coffee at 11 or 11.15 I guess. And suddenly, you know, just before that I could see, okay, MTM was minus 10,000. So even though I was trading with one crore, I thought, okay, 10,000 is very negligible anyways, it should recover. So I, I didn't give much attention. The moment I was about to move, suddenly I could see MTM no, almost dipping to minus 1.5, 2 lakh. I thought some error in the front end. I thought zero the error. <laughs> I thought it is zero the front end. I was refreshing it. It was still you no know, minus 1.5, it was minus 2 lakhs. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, see, okay, market is going down. So this is what's supposed to happen when market suddenly moved down. And then I stick to it like I couldn't overrate the system because I know that is eventually, you know, would be recovered over a couple of expiries. But initially, I said, right, you need to get a conviction. That conviction comes only when you, you know, back test or when you test certain trading strategies without you no know, over optimizing it. So I have you no know, done this run this strategy almost for most you no know, last one and a half years on every single expiry. Mm -hmm. Even during this you know Russian Ukraine war and you know, all those periods, we have seen you no know, huge volatility. So basically, I know my system would not do well if there is a sudden drop or sudden move in the markets. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what happened on that day. So there was a sudden drop and I know there was an overall portfolio worst case scenario stop loss level where if it is, I'm going to close all the positions and that's it, done for the day. No revenge trading, not going to recover anything. I just wanted to follow the process. So everything was set because mm -hmm. you tend to panic only when you do not know what needs mm -hmm. to be done. Right. So here, even though the market was going down, I'm not in a panic mode because no, I know this is what the process is. Everything is fed into the system and the system is following what I have taught to the system. So that, that was the exact thing that happened. So I know before I get into a trade, I know exactly this is the worst case scenario. So that day, even though losing almost 2.9 lakhs is 3% of my capital, which I would be able to manage to recover over the period of time. But if I'm losing 30% of the capital on that day, definitely that would have been no very, very hard for me to come over it. So you have to have the balance, like what should be the right you know, uh, loss that you're comfortable with. So Kiru, tell me this. Um... Was the 3% loss in a single day expected as per your backtest? And what is the maximum drawdown, a worst case scenario, a loss in your backtest? Yeah, this 3% is expected when market suddenly moves down. So historically, I could face anywhere between you know, 3 to 5% or when there is sudden moment that happens in the market. And drawdown wise, I could say like in the last one and a half years, Till December, I did not increase my risk. So till December, I was continuing the same risk and I was continuing with the same position size. That gave almost you no know, returns of 30% returns with less than 4% drawdown. Overall drawdown itself of 4%. From December 1st onwards, I doubled my risk. So my expected returns could increase and also my expected drawdown would increase it, but still it could be less than 10%. So I increased my risk and then I traded from December 1st onwards. And to my luck, the moment I increased my risk, the market you no know, completely went into volatile phase on every single yeah. expiry. So I I used to have I had almost twelve back to back profitable expiries, and after that I'm facing almost five back to back losing expiries. Oh. 
and no the, the sixth expiry was profitable again the seventh expiry was low so overall the drawdown is still around 8% and wow. the worst case scenario so the worst case scenario is around you no know, uh, 3 or 3.5 percent is the worst case scenario in the back test. And if I have not increased the risk from in the month of December, still my drawdown would have been just under 5 percent. Love it, Yaar Kiru. So you have to increase it. So if you have to increase it, obviously you will be facing these kind of issues. So this is part and parcel of trading. Nothing can be done. You know, love it, Kiru. I love that you brought it down to a science and you know what is the worst case scenario. And I guess fear is where, uh, fear happens when you don't know, right? Fear happens in the darkness. Uh, when there is light, you know what's going to happen. So at least you can calm yourself down. So okay, so we we understood all this. We understood risk management. You covered. Uh, if something is expected, it's going to happen. It could be worse also, and you should be okay with it. If you're not, don't trade, man. Do something else. Love it, Kiru. Now what I'll do is I have two questions from actual users. Um, and if you like this and you've survived so far in this video, please ask a question. Kiru will answer. We will answer. Uh, but let me read the question out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it goes. Kiru, you are damn hot. Oh, just sorry, sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> I, Kiru, I am a BSc student trading for the last two years. I have just learnt programming. Can I become a quant trader? Okay, okay. That's a good question. See, so far what I've seen is there are good traders mm. and there are good coders. But I have mm. never seen a you know, combination of good traders or good coders. Mm -hmm. So if you could crack this coding model, like if we have already learned it, then you can easily create multiple strategies out there. But you need to observe the markets. Like you no know, people who are sitting in, in front of a screen and observing the markets for last few years, like five or six years of time, you can't replicate that. So that is the time that they have put into it. So if you are a student who know, know about coding and if you wanted to get into a quant based system, definitely there is a huge, huge demand, even with career wise, even for personal friends, you could know, become a good quant programmer. But the thing is, you need to have this market observing skills, like you download all the historical data and see how the market has behaved over the past. Try to read more about market behavior rather than trading strategies. So the moment you read more about market behaviors and what happened during the you know, 2020 crash, 2000 bubble, uh, no, during the dot-com bubble or during the 2008. So all these times, you know, if you just go and research about articles, it gives you detailed insights about market behavior and how people reacted, how market moved. And then if you go and you know, read about trading strategies, then it would you know, make sense. Everything. So everything would make sense and you can create your own strategies and start getting into it. So if you're already a good programmer, don't directly get into you know, building trading strategies. Try to you know, read more about market behavior and then move to developing strategies. Uh, give me a one-line answer to this, uh, Kiru, because the next is a very complicated answer, but uh, let's simplify the answer. So the question is, um, hi, Kiru, generally I do time-based short straddles, but sometimes due to IV spikes, bank nifty option stop lots get hit, hit quickly. How can I handle IV spikes in the market? Again, stop loss question. <laughs> okay. Okay. See, there, there is an, another approach that you could do. It's the two ways that you could do it. So when you are using a uh, no time-based straddles or strangles and trying to use a fixed stop loss, so definitely when there is a sudden spike, the stop loss is going to get hit for sure. Mm -hmm. So instead, what you can do is use an underlying stop loss. See, you are trading, bank, say for an example, if you're trading bank nifty. So instead of using a stop loss based on premium, you shorted under rupees call option, you shorted under rupees put option. Instead of using a, you know, a stop loss on premium, use a stop loss on underlying. If underlying moves 0.5%, if underlying moves 0.25%, then I will exit my legs. If you do this, then okay. these sudden spikes would not affect you. It would be much easier for you to manage it. So try to change your stop loss from having an underlying stop loss, I mean, from a you know, on the stop loss based on premiums to yeah. underlying, then it would be easier to manage. So that I have seen personally. So that is much easier to manage these spikes rather than trying to you know, change your stop loss levels. Okay, I'm putting at 20%. If I put at 40%, it will not get hit. But even at 40%, sometimes it might get hit. So it's better to use you know, stop loss based on underlying. Super, Kiru. I enjoyed this as always. Uh, we kept this tech a little technical this time because I think that's what people want to learn from you. Um, we first discussed about the three things professional traders do. One is on a large capital, a single trade is very small risk. 
Two, they adjust position based on either risk or probability. And third, they find a way to have a system so that they don't have emotion. We also talked about the journey of an algo trader. People want to jump to become a fighter pilot, and but they don't know class 10 physics. So Kiru, uh, you know, we thought that trading is difficult and everyone needs to learn it, but there's no place you can learn it in an interactive way. So the LearnApp experience is, we have a new thing called LearnApp Prime, where you can come and you can learn trading over two days. It's the basics of trading. We focus more on the risks versus the rewards, so we scare you a lot. Uh, but in a cohort of other people, you learn by actually doing and attending these live classes. So if anyone's interested, they should definitely apply for Prime. It is free, but only 20% of people can get access to it. Most people who say, I want to double my money are uh, removed from over here. So we check for aptitude. Uh, so fill up the form carefully. Thank you so much for your time, Kiru. If you have any questions, put it in the comments. Kiru, any parting lines you want to tell people who watch the show? Nothing, man. I just wanted to finish this podcast with the same no lie. Like if there is a process that will give progress, make sure that you follow process. Eventually, profit will come. <laughs>